Yeah, Adnan, he's one of my friends in Dubai and he DMs me on Instagram going like You should call yourself Suga and this is what it means <laughs> And we read the definition and we were like, that's actually really good Yeah It's perfect It's just sitting on a couch, doing nothing and just enjoying this like warmth of, and comfort Like it's contentment Yeah Yeah, so that just really appealed to us Even though no one will know how to say it Yeah We persisted um, I do write my own things, but I love, love, love writing for other people or arranging for other people. So when Chris came to me and she had this incredible ability to be so emotionally raw in her language and in how cohesive everything sounds like within a song, um, it was just so easy for me to start thinking about how do, we, how do I translate this into parts and um, that's basically how our dynamic developed. I would like to play a bit with the stops. Like, I'd like to play with the rhythms a tiny bit, just like this, this at the beginning. So maybe like, give me that sweet, 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 sweet love. I think there's like two ways a creative work can really like hit the mark. It's either you really stretch it to all of the options and find the best one and it can take so much time or you really just like find it in one moment but that middle ground of like going like uh, i'll settle for that i think is when it's just like a flop and with blind faith we really just like milked it i mean as soon as i first heard it when you when you sang it to me i was like that's a hit like i just knew it just show me a sign babe that i can believe yeah, just taking little bits from all the different versions I think has given us what we have ended up with today. And acoustically it sounds really good, like that recording, like the acoustic one. It shows the, you know, the bare minimum of like how something can sound like when there's like no embellishments. And it shows the real beauty as well. Nothing goes to waste, like even if you go through the whole process and you start again, you're ex you still have the experience of exploring the song previously, even if it's a different direction. Nothing goes to waste. And throwing things out sometimes is, is really good, like not to be so connected in an unhealthy way to like a version of a song. And, you know, this is the version that bred the harmonies that we had, for example. Like, there are elements out of it that we took. Actually, I love, like, showing her something very raw and her, like, I can see it in her face that, like, she hears this whole arrangement in her head and she has amazing ideas. Um, and I really love exploring all of those with her. It's really fun. It's nice. Yeah, no, I, I, I do think that every single person in the world has musical capability, but we're so faced with being anxious about performing or about singing or about making sounds. I think it's like musicians don't talk enough about these times where you're like, I really don't want to do this anymore. Or like when you're just completely feel disconnected with what you're doing. Well, for me, it's time um, being a mother to two little kids and having a full time job and just trying to fit it in <laughs> to life is genuinely my biggest challenge. Personally, like my my challenge at this moment in time, I think like moving to Australia, even at like the age of I'm going to be 29 soon, e even at that age, I feel like I'm still forming my identity a bit. I was holding that in the whole time. <laughs> I wrote Blind Faith at work on my work notepad that was on my desk. Like, don't have your working, boss here. This. Working away, and then I'd think of a line and I'd jot it down, and that's how it happened. Mm -hmm.